Hi all, Becky from the Hypothesis Success Team. We do have uh, quite a few people registered for today's workshop. So I'll go ahead and give everyone uh, a minute or so uh, to get logged in, get settled, and then we'll get started. Great, it's about uh, three after. So I will go ahead and get started and then um, anyone that jumps in last minute, no big deal. Um, first off, I'm going to go ahead and throw a link to today's slide deck in the chat so that you have that. And uh, before we kind of get into the uh, nitty gritties of the, today's workshop, I did just want to remind you a few things um, in the Zoom webinar. Um, just make sure if you do uh, post in the chat that you select all panelists and attendees. Uh, that way everyone in today's session can um, see your introduction and then also um, if you have any ideas or questions to share that we can all see those as well. Uh, just another introduction from myself, I'm Becky from the Hypothesis Success Team and Erin is joining us today. She'll um, help answer any questions that come up in the chat uh, and just help support us in today's workshop. Um, I wanted to go ahead and just so that we can learn a little bit about each of you, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat, uh, share your name, what school you're coming from today, what discipline or what role you have at your institution, and then what you're hoping. Uh, you can either share two things, either your goal for today's workshop or um, your experience with Hypothesis so far. It looks like we have uh, quite a diverse group in terms of where you are all coming from today. Um, and nice to see some, some recognizable names. So thanks for joining us all today. I'm sure if you've been to a hypothesis workshop before you have come across these resources, I just wanted to let you know that they are available for you to come back to. So the first two are great resources. Um, well, probably the first three are great resources to share with students, uh, particularly on guiding them on what uh, quality annotations can and should look like. Uh, I'll briefly, uh, some of the ideas I share today do involve adding multimedia, so adding images, videos, and links to your annotations. So that guide walks you through how to do that. Also a great resource to share with students. Uh, and then we have a um, We've been fortunate that we have so many partners that are willing to share their resources that they've created. So you can link out to all of those that we've been collating as well as some other examples of classroom use to come back to. Uh, today's workshop is not our intro um, activating annotation in blank LMS. Um, so whatever that LMS is today. Um, so most likely, um, hopefully if you are in today's workshop, um, you already know how to use hypothesis in your LMS. So we aren't going to cover the nitty gritties of how to set that up. Uh, but please know that if you are uh, new to using hypothesis or haven't even yet had a chance to jump in and get started, know that Erin and I are here to support you. So we're happy to help um, set up a one on one outside of this so we can demo the tool for you or walk you through the steps. So just know that um, we are there for you. Um, I'll just go ahead so you all have it top of mind, throw our email address in the chat uh, so that you can reach out if that does apply to you. We would love to work with you on getting started if you're not yet at that place. Uh, but just for your reference, we have these resources here for you. So um, whatever LMS that you use at your institution, you can um, link out to these resources. Uh, so just a reminder that they're there for you as well. So um, today will really just be about sharing ideas of creative ways to use social annotation in your courses, ways to make annotation not just feel like another uh, check mark that students have to do, a way to maybe incorporate some active learning strategies, some discussion protocols, and so on that will not only make your students uh, learning more active, more visible, and uh, more social, but also just so that students are um, enjoy the experience. They're enjoying participating in the reading, um, sharing that experience with you and their classmates. Uh, so I'll start off by going through some, just some discussion protocols and active learning strategies that you could apply to your annotated readings with your students. 
so here's one idea here is to have students um, be responsible for creating different level questions throughout the text. Um, leveled one questions could be text based and reference the text directly. You could have a group of students responsible for doing just level two questions. These are broadening the student's understanding of an issue by speculating about the social and cultural considerations surrounding it. And then you could have another group uh, do be responsible for level three questions. So asking students to make those personal connections to the text uh, and to the ideas that you're discussing. Um, so for example, how do these ideas issues affect you or your community? Uh, an, another way to add additional engagement with uh, different levels of questions is to also assign student facilitators. Uh, so you could have three student facilitators, one for each level of the questions. Those students help kick off the conversation at each level by posing a question and also monitoring that portion of like the seminar or the discussion. Uh, so make sure that everyone's questions are being heard, everyone's voice is being heard throughout that. Uh, some other discussion protocols and active learning strategies that you can use with your annotations is um, is some of these listed here. So if you're not familiar with um, some of these, I can run through them for you. Uh, so write, pair, share, you could have students uh, annotate individually, uh, write out their ideas, then pair up, share those with their uh, classmate, uh, with their colleague. And then um, one of those individuals in that pair could be the spokesperson to share out maybe what was the most meaningful annotation or what was the annotation that stood out the most for them uh, in the text. Uh, another option is something called a, um, and I've adjusted the name of this one a little bit. Um, sometimes you might hear it called like a one minute paper or a one minute essay, um, but you could have students uh, annotate for one minute by writing a brief summary of the text or identifying the most important point. Uh, so annotations don't have to be, um, you know, a lengthy process. It could just be, okay, what's really top of mind for me? Um, I know this was mentioned in Liquid Margins, I believe this past Friday, but uh, Jigsaw is another way uh, to, to have students annotate a text. So students are divided up into several different teams. Each team is responsible for either a specific article or a specific section of an article. Uh, and then their role is to really become the experts uh, on their section or their reading. So, um, and then their role is to, uh, as the expert, to then share with their colleagues. Uh, so whether other students are going back and reading their, uh, each group's annotations to learn from them, ask questions uh, and continue that conversation. Uh, sometimes it's called final words, sometimes it's called save the last word, so you choose. Um, a student selects, so one student selects a quotation from the text and they annotate it, uh, and then the other students take turns responding to that specific text. Uh, but the original student who selected that quote is the one who, um, their role is really to reflect at the end. They close out the discussion with a, a reflection, so they're, in other words, saving the last word for that, um, that particular student. Uh, a couple other ideas listed here is, um, and I'll uh, bounce around a little bit, um, but a three, two, one is um, they can ask uh, maybe three questions they have, two things they found interesting uh, in one, uh, one way to like that their thinking was pushed a little bit further as well. Uh, so that's an idea. Oops, there we go. Um, another one is like a sit. So they uh, share one thing that's surprising, one thing that's interesting, and one thing that is troubling. These are also great um, ways to incorporate tags. So students could add surprising, interesting, and troubling as their tags. Um, 
And then Cecilia, you're just way ahead of it. The four A's <laughs> um, are uh, what assumptions does the author of the text hold? What do you agree with in the text? Uh, what do you want to argue with in the text? And what um, parts of the text you aspire to? Uh, so since I, uh, I'll throw those uh, questions in the chat just so you have them to reference as well. Um, well, this is just, you know, not an exhaustive list. Um, so there's lots of different discussion protocols and active learning strategies out there that you could apply to your readings, make them work for you, whether you're doing asynchronous learning, synchronous learning, um, some sort of hybrid model as well. So apply, um, take one of these protocols or others that are out there and, and make it work for you and your students. Another important thing is um, to have students make connections with their text to help them better understand the text. Um, so have them consider all the unique ways that they connect with it. Um, here are just some, and this may be important to explicitly have students call attention to. So maybe they're expected to make each of these four connections as they read. So a text to self connection, a text to text connection, that text to world. Um, and then um, maybe they've seen, this reminds them of something they've seen before, whether it's in a book, TV, online, read about it, heard about it in a podcast, um, they can share that as well. Also great, this would be great um, way to incorporate uh, adding multimedia to your annotations. Um, I'll just take a pause there. Does anyone, um, feel free to throw it in the chat or raise your hand if you would like to share verbally, if anyone has used any other forms of discussion protocols or active learning strategies that have uh, worked for you and your students while they're reading. If some do come to mind, uh, feel free to share them in the chat. Uh, you may or may not be familiar with uh, Harvard Project Zero's uh, visible thinking routines. Uh, those are great ways for uh, adding additional level of visibility to students thinking while they're reading. Um, so I've added just a few here to, we'll talk about just uh, four, um, but um, if you go to, I'll throw a link to it in the chat. If you go to this website, um, Project Zero's website, you can find all of their thinking routines and you definitely a lot of these are adaptable to reading. Um, and again, both synchronously or asynchronously um, working together. Uh, so just a few that um, I think would be particularly useful as students annotate. And if you've ever been in one of my uh, intro workshops, you've probably heard this one before because I talked about it, but uh, the compass points. This is a great one to use uh, to build community with your students. Uh, so students are sharing uh, four things. Uh, great to get started with the syllabus as well. So if that's your first annotation assignment, um, you can use the compass point. So students share four things. Um, they're, what do they need to know? What are they excited about? Um, what suggestions or what stance do they have? Um, based on what they're reading and what worries do they have. Uh, so again, a great way to incorporate that social, emotional and community building aspect to reading. Um, another one that could be used is um, the sentence structure. So a lot of times students don't know where to get started with their annotations. Uh, they don't know how to reflect on their thinking, how it's maybe changed. Uh, and adjusted since they've read or had a discussion in course. Uh, so having them uh, just use the sentence frame here. I used to think, and now I think. Uh, so it has, um, this would be a great one maybe to even put in a page note. Um, so maybe it's not related to a specific text, but it's related to the entire reading itself. After they've read it, now they have this you know, change of heart or a change in opinion. Uh, a few others that could be useful is um, headlines. So think of headlines as like a headline of a newspaper. So students are reflecting and synthesizing and identifying the headline of the text. So what are the needs to know? How could you summarize this text in just one, one phrase as if it were a newspaper uh, headline? Another one and a great way to incorporate multimedia is color symbol image. Uh, so what color represents the text, what symbol represents the text, what image represents the text. You could have different students responsible for different, um, different versions of this, or even students could choose which one they feel most 
uh, connected to. So maybe they don't have to do all three, but they choose, um, maybe this reading really makes them think of a color and here's why. I'll go ahead and just pause again in case anyone has any other ideas uh, to share if you've used another visible thinking strategy with your students before or something similar, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Great. Another way to use uh, to add creativity uh, to students annotations is have them uh, take on different roles while they're reading while they're annotating. Uh, so most annotation is probably in the student voice. They're sharing, I think this, or maybe I have a question about this. Um, and that may range from maybe informal um, to uh, what is what is this author thinking here to even maybe formal engagement, such as like this is an example of Freud's concept of blank, 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 um, with a citation. Uh, so while I'm sure you're seeing um, both formal and informal engagement with the text, it's most likely coming from the student's voice. Uh, so you could have a student uh, take on a unique role while they're annotating. So maybe they're the voice of the author. Maybe they're coming from the perspective of a historical figure or a scholar or even a famous person. So another way to engage with the text. And uh, Kyle, thank you um, for sharing this one. If you haven't seen Kyle's message in the uh, chat, the idea of doing a fishbowl activity uh, where half of the students annotate a text and discuss it, and the other half observe the annotations uh, and do a meta discussion around it. So that's a that's a great idea. Uh, another way is to have students take on uh, different roles in the annotation. So you could put them in groups or just divide them up and divvy up the roles. Uh, so here's just some examples. You could have a questioner, a director, an illustrator, a connector. Um, but there's lots of options out there. Uh, so you could have uh, one person be the annotator and keep it simple and one person is the spokesperson for the group. Um, maybe you have a fact checker. So that student's responsible for like, what is the legitimacy of the sources that are being added or what's the legitimacy of the text? Um, maybe one student is the reflector. So their role is to, um, or the synthesizer. So they're looking at all of the annotations as a whole, um, maybe coming up with the one that is the adds the most meaning or is the most inspiring or um, is the most enlightening. Uh, and then maybe just have a recorder and someone who's recording the thoughts or the discussion of the group and sharing those out as annotations, maybe in a, in a page note in the in a hypothesis sidebar. Keep sharing if you have any ideas, keep sharing those in the chat. We would love to hear um, about them. I will say this next section, I had to do my own uh, research because apparently my age showed <laughs> um, and I had to do a little research on what 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 social media is out there. So this may not even be the best ideas. Um, and I'm sure your students could probably come up with even better ones because they're more familiar with what's being used out there in terms of social media. Um, but we do know that students are used to social media. Um, they're on their phones, they're pulling it up in a, in a tab to see, um, see how many likes or um, hearts they're getting and so on. Um, so why not incorporate that into your annotations as well? Uh, so just some ideas here. Um, you could have students uh, create a tweet and that's their annotation. So maybe they're limited by the number of characters. So they have up to 280 characters uh, to create their annotation. Almost like it could be, you could combine this with headlines. Uh, so here's their headline. Here's what they need to know. Here's what they'd want to share out if they could share anything uh, with, the, with the course, with those annotating with them. Uh, this is the one I particularly had to do research on because I don't know anything about TikTok. <laughs> um, but students create, could create a little short form video. Uh, I guess in my research, I found out that TikTok videos are uh, range from 15 to 60 seconds. So that would be, you could give students a time limit. Maybe they're creating a YouTube video and that's 15 to 60 seconds and adding that as an annotation. Maybe they're um, filming themselves in a Flipgrid video. Uh, and they're adding a link to that Flipgrid video. Um, one I'm a little bit more familiar with is Instagram. So maybe have students imagine what a character or the author would post on Instagram and create that post with an image, a cap caption, whatever hashtags they would use 
as well. And those hashtags could ultimately become um, tags in your, uh, you and your students annotations as well. It doesn't always have to be annotating um, a scholarly text. You could be annotating each other's work. Uh, you could have students annotate each other's work. Um, so peer-to-peer -peer feedback or peer-to-peer -peer review is one that um, comes up a lot. Um, you could have students do some form of like revision practice or um, looking at a model essay and they um, use that as their guideline to then give each other feedback uh, in their own work. Uh, I will say just something to note with peer-to-peer -peer feedback is that the way that Hypothesis works as an external tool um, is that you um, as the instructor would still be the one that would have to add Hypothesis. Uh, so whether you're adding it to a lesson in Sakai or adding it to an assignment in Canvas or so on, um, you would wanna set up some sort of procedure or protocol for your students so that they're submitting the work to you. Um, most likely you'd want them to do that as a PDF, keep it sim simple. So they submit the PDF of their work to you and then you can add that um, as a hypothesis enabled reading in your LMS. So just a, lo a little logistical tip for you there. Um, and maybe it's useful when you, students are doing peer review and peer-to-peer -peer feedback is um, using some sort of feedback protocol. So maybe students don't know how yet to give each other feedback. How do they push each other um, to get better? So here's, um, there's lots of other ones out there, um, but here's, I'll share just a few ideas with you. Uh, so tag feedback protocol is one way. Um, so students have to do two, three things when they give each other feedback. And that's um, share something that they like, ask those thoughtful questions um, and give suggestions. And depending on the scaffolding that your students need, maybe it is important to include more sentence stems like this or sentence starters for them to get started. Um, and that would really depend on the, you know, the needs and what would be most useful for your students. Uh, another idea for doing feedback is the plus minus delta feedback protocol. Uh, so what did the student um, or what did the author, what did the writer do really well? What did not go so well or what wasn't done well? Uh, and then that delta, what can they change? So what would you like to see them adjust in their writing and their uh, text to uh, demonstrate improvement? Uh, and this could also be used, these um, protocols could also be used with scholarly text. Um, it's a great way to give feedback to, uh, to prove the legitimacy, to analyze uh, those um, scholarly articles and, and academic readings as well, in addition to students' academic writings. Just some other ideas uh, to make annotating fun. Uh, you could have students keep track of something silly. Uh, so like how many times the author uses a particular phrase in the text. Um, Perhaps that could lead to a deeper conversation about word choice, the style of the author, the style of the writing. Uh, you could have students develop their own secret code for annotating uh, and create some sort of legend around it, explaining what each symbol or what each word in their code means. Uh, encouraging students to add those multimedia components is also a great way to uh, increase students' access of the reading um, and annotating in a way that they feel um, most comfortable. Um, and another fun one I've seen is uh, turning it into a scavenger hunt. So their role is to find specific components in the text. Um, make it a scavenger hunt. So now, um, one more time, I'm gonna turn to you. Um, and if you wanna just, um, I'll give you a little bit of think time. Um, but uh, the goal with Hypothesis is for your readings to become more active, more visible, and more social for you and your students. So think about the readings that you assign to your students. How can you creatively use social annotation in your courses? And feel free um, if you want to go ahead and raise your hand if you want to share verbally or just uh, throw your thoughts, ideas in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. Go for it, Kurt, if you want to go ahead. Sure. Hi, Becky. Um... On that last slide you posted, you mentioned about tracking uh, words or phrases, and that's actually a sort of a go-to method I use for um, pattern analysis of when we're interpreting a literary text, we identify 
a word repeated or a phrase repeated as a way to get to um, the overall thematic preoccupation of the text. And it's, it's a really powerful uh, analytical tool I find. So it's not just for, uh, you know, uh, it's really it really encourages close reading of the text and then they can identify multiple ones and we create we use the sort of a, a tag feature to begin tagging the motifs that we're finding uh, repeated throughout the text. Thank you so much for sharing that. Kurt took the lead on this one. Does anyone else have any other ideas? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. We can hear you, Kyle. Excellent. At least I can. <laughs> okay, cool. So this idea comes from Kate. Uh, Kate, I can't remember her last name, but or how how to pronounce it. But Kate Denial, Daniel. Um, she's a history history professor, I believe, in Canada, um, and she's taught the practice of um, bibliography by having her students kind of reverse engineer a paper or a book title from the bibliography that's provided. So she'll provide their, her students with a bibliography to look at, and then their students kind of suggest a book title based on what they see. Um, so I can see that very easily translating to a, an annotation activity. Yeah, that's a great one. And uh, thanks, uh, Kyle. Also, just um, threw a link to more information about reverse engineering the big bibliography. So that's a great one. I'm not sure if Jonathan wants to talk because Jonathan, you've got some questions about your suggestions in the chat. So if you want to um, raise your hand and Becky or Becky can unmute you and you can answer. Or Alex, if you want to ask Jonathan the question directly. I'm here. I, I haven't seen the questions though. Uh, it looks like it might have just gone uh, to Aaron and I, so that would be why. Oh, um, so sorry, I'll, sorry about that. I just noticed if you that. if you repeat it, I will do what I can. Perfect. Um, it looks like Alex is just asking. Um, does that mean that everyone has access to everyone's paper, or do you use groups for that? So, what does that logistically look like in your course? Everyone so has good. access to everyone's paper. They're blind PDFs. Um, I post the, 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 pa the papers without names, students run through them, I run through them. Um, no grades, obviously that comes later, but I find it very helpful because the students tend to take care of the, the really easy stuff at the very least, so that I don't have to write the same comments over and over and over again. Um, and then, um, you know, the the grading process itself the the real serious stuff i i still tend to end up doing but uh everybody ends up getting be better papers and so many of the same sort of general theoretical mistakes uh, are always going to be made in a in a class and so everybody can see that process unfold um in hypothesis i guess one other thing is i have to do the posting that would probably be the only drawback um, so I'm posting a, a lot of, of PDFs, um, but you know, I, I still think it's worth it. It's certainly better than uh, handing out physical copies inside a class uh, where you know, they ask people to bring three copies and share it in small groups. It's just much more efficient. Yeah, thanks for that, uh, those details. I think what I've seen um, to avoid having to, uh, let's say you have two, 20 students in a course and rather than posting each of those assignments individually, um, so each of their papers individually, you could take all of their, um, their work and turn it into one PDF and then only add that single PDF as a hypothesis enabled reading. So their papers would all be in the same PDF one after the other. Um, so like a title or some sort of divider between them um, would be useful, but um, that's another option so that you don't have to create uh, each of those like 20 different hypothesis enabled readings. Great, well, I don't wanna put anyone too much on the spot today, but hopefully this has given you some food for thought uh, to think about, think about what ways you could maybe run with one of these. Um, no need to try them all, <laughs> um, but give one a go, see how it works, see if it needs to be adjusted for your specific reading that you're doing with your students, uh, the way your courses run. Um, and, 
and we would love to always hear how it goes and um, hear from you in terms of um, what went well, what didn't go well, and we're always here to help um, brainstorm more ideas with you. Um, that does sort of wrap up today's uh, workshop, uh, but just know that you are not alone out there as you're annotating. We have, um, just by looking at today's participation, you can see we have um, educators all over the US and even all over the world uh, that are using hypothesis for social annotation. So there's a lot of, um, I'm sure you could even just Google what's happening at Pratt and see how they're using social annotation uh, in their, their courses, just as an example. So there's a lot out there. Um, and just know, um, Aaron and I always um, want you to know that we are um, here to support you. Um, our support engineers are also there. Um, so for any of those tech glitches that do come up, something doesn't function as expected, we have a dedicated support team that will help you uh, troubleshoot any of those issues and make sure we can um, make it a positive experience for you and your students to use Hypothesis in your courses. Uh, and then um, on the pedagogical side, like I said, Aaron and I are happy to meet with any of you further um, to have uh, deeper conversations about maybe ways you could use this in your, uh, in your course or feel free to share our um, meeting link with any of your colleagues that might be interested in getting started or learning more. Uh, and just note that I always recommend checking out Liquid Margins, uh, hosted about every two weeks on Friday mornings, at least morning for me on the Pacific Coast. <laughs> it might be afternoon for some of y'all. Uh, uh, the great thing about that too is you can always check out, um, we pull out a few uh, highlights from each show so that even if you don't have time to watch the entirety, the show in its entirety, you can watch those uh, one to two minute highlights. Uh, and then uh, we will continue to add to our uh, partner workshops that we are offering. Um, in fact, this website was updated this morning uh, by our marketing team for us. So um, feel free to pass that on to uh, any colleagues or uh, team members that may be interested in participating in one of our upcoming uh, workshops. So uh, hopefully today I can give you uh, some, at least, about 15 minutes of your of your morning or afternoon back and uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions, any ideas to share and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>